How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the week two roundup for the Elite Battle League. We're back uh, with another very interesting Ooh. week. I mean, there's again another week where I feel like we saw quite a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we saw a very dominant performance from one team and just a, a few close matches as well. Some luck that didn't go a certain somebody's way um <laughs> but that yeah just a fantastic week all around i think honestly i kind of liked week two a little bit more than week one i think there's a lot more going on with this one a lot more strategy uh, as teams are getting more comfortable uh, but before we touch on all the matches you guys definitely need to go check out all the coaches in the description down below all their links are down there check them all out every saturday we have the matches uploaded so be sure to go check out all the coaches so you get get to see all those matches of course um i am lonely hermit your host and of course i'm always joined by my co-host it's really timmy b how are you doing today my friend I am doing a great Lonely Hermit. We are having a good day. There were a bunch of great battles, as you said, and uh, we kind of got some more questions answered about some certain battle styles and everything like that, and uh, a little some surprises still, which is awesome to see, and we just had another great week of battling, and I uh, can't wait to talk about some of these amazing matches. Yeah, I'm super excited. Also, of course, as always, we're joined by Belly. Uh, she's always Ooh. there. Um, of course, Timmy's links will be down below alongside my own. All those links are down below. Be sure to check everybody out follow the socials and do all that good stuff uh there is something i wanted to mention before we get into it but i forgot so we're just gonna get right into it um we're gonna uh, again of course i keep saying it but we're gonna be going off of the schedule in our discord there's no favoritism or anything like that uh just to make it as you know uh neutral as possible um first up we have quite an interesting match um Ooh. a match that proved a lot for fusro dab um, but also for Derek, I feel like more so. But this was an incredible match between the Evergood Entes and the Kentucky Kinglers. Had it, it was threatening to be a a very one sided match for a second there. And uh, uh, Foos, I'm not a fan of you telling me what we're gonna do on this roundup. Okay, I watched your video. You said we were gonna talk about it. Not a fan of it, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. So. <laughs> um, for a second there, like you said, like I just, just said, it was, it was threatening to be a, a sweep at one point. Primarina came in and just dominated, racked up three kills, um, and it was not looking pretty for the Evergrade Entes. I believe at that point they were up 4-0, or Kentucky was up 4-0, um, or maybe 4-1, but they were up by a lot at that point, um, and were controlling the match, but then Groudon came in, uh, Weezing, well, first of all, Weezing's Toxic was able to finish out Premier Arena, but then Groudon came in and started to establish a little bit of momentum for the Everglade Entes. Um, like Fu said, Fu said it himself, he didn't really see them coming back, and I didn't really see them coming back either, but, but, I will say Fu did a great job at closing it down instead of it being like a 6-1, 6-2, or even a 6-0 for that matter, um, it ended up being a 6-4, so Fu was able to close it down a lot, keep himself with a positive KD, keep him above ground, um, but man, an impressive performance from Derek. I mean, he he did really well. Primarina obviously walked away with the Mega Division MVP with that performance. I mean, that was kind of obvious. It was pretty obvious that it was going to walk away with that. Um, but it, it was it was really good. Um, one of my favorite plays of the season uh, behind another play we'll talk about in my match later because that's that I have, I'm going to be biased <laughs> towards that one. But um, <laughs> Primarina comes in on Torkoal or no, comes in and then uh, Foos brings in Torkoal to try and bait a water type move. So that way um, uh, Torkoal can switch out into Gastrodon, which has, I think, the because uh, I know there's two abilities that do that, but I think it has Storm Dream. Um, and instead, Derek uses energy ball, predicted the bait, and got rid of the Gastrodon in one shot. And that kind of started Primarina's role. And that was an excellent prediction from Derek. It goes to show how much Derek has really grown. We keep talking about that. It's been a huge talking point over these last couple of seasons is Derek's growth. Um, and man, that, that definitely proved it. That he kind of knows what he's doing now. And he's currently up there in the Mega Division um, behind uh, Landon, the Iowa Incineroar. Um, is, that's the only team that he's behind, but they're tied. They're tied on differential. They're they're neck and neck up there. So it's it was a, it was a, it was a pretty good, pretty freaking good matchup. So what'd you, what'd you think of this, Timmy? What are your thoughts? Yeah, you just took the words right out of my mouth. Move of the season, definitely move of the week, needless to say, from Derek. Uh, going into that energy ball, predicting the switch into Gastrodon with the uh, Storm Drain ability, so or Water Absorb, whatever or whatever one it is. That was absolutely huge from Derek to call that, and that started his run. Mm -hmm. 
And then Foose brought his Drought team, as we were saying, with Torkoal and Groudon. Just couldn't quite get that move. And we predicted Foose's Gambit with uh, some of his amazing chess moves. And he was outplayed by Derek. Foose still had a great strategy and everything like that watching his side. And then once that energy ball happened, his plan just went yeah. out the window. He was like, I don't know what to do right now. So Derek has really grown, as we've been saying, the last couple of weeks and going back to season one. Seeing his growth and development, this is a guy who wants to win, wants to put in the work, and the work is now paying off. So absolutely move of the day uh, or of the week, excuse me, comes from Derek's pre-marina going to that energy ball, predicting the switch. Fu still had a great plan, still had a great battle, but as I said, once that happened, uh, not saying it was all over, but Foos' strategy just went out the window at that mm -hmm. point. So it was a great matchup. Uh, next week, we see the Kentucky Kinglers against the Iowa Incern Orb, which we'll talk to uh, I'll talk about in just a second. So that's going to be a, a great matchup. Battle for first place within the, the division as well. So uh, well-earned victory by Jack. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, by Derek. Excuse okay. me. And Foos, Foos isn't going anytime soon. He'll mm -hmm. still be competitive. He'll mm -hmm. still win a couple of matches. So he'll be right there at, in the Mega Division. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next week's actually... It's actually good for Foos that uh, that Derek and Landon will be facing off for that first place spot because that's a chance for Everglade to hop into second, potentially. Um, so that's, yeah, you're right. But full credit to Foos, man. I mean, the, the match looked dim. It, it did not look good for him, but that Toxic came up huge. Um, and despite falling into that early hole, he was able to close down the gap. So that's why I said it, it was a good showing of what Foos is capable, capable of, definitely, um, because he, he turned that match around really well. Uh, but again, huge match. Uh, I'd say it, at first it didn't seem like it was going to live up to the hype we were giving it, but it did turn around in the second half and definitely started to get a lot closer. And it was a very intense matchup uh, between two great battlers. So GG's to both of you guys. You played a, a heck of a match. Uh, but oh, and like I mentioned, the Mega MVP, of course, came out of the Kentucky camp. Uh, but moving on to our next matchup of the week, we have the New Brunswick and Ninetales versus the Iowa Incident War. Uh, the only match that went to timer this week um, and uh, Jack piece of advice if you make your moves a little bit faster just like a little bit faster you might not go to timer just just saying if every single one of your moves is taking a minute maybe speed up the process a little bit you might not go to timer I can't wait to play him next week that's gonna be fun um, <laughs> so this match was interesting because it it, it felt like it felt like that Incineroar were controlling it, but at the same time, it kind of didn't. It felt more like maybe I would say maybe that the Nine Tails were kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Not to take any, anything away from Landa, because he had a good plan for for Jack's team and what he, he clearly knew what Jack was gonna bring. Um, I unfortunately only got to watch Jack's side, so I don't really know. Um, but it was it was it was weird because it felt dominant, but at the same time, it felt like. It felt like the, the, the nine tails were just shooting themselves in the own foot in their own foot. Uh, did you did you feel the same way or did you think of it differently for this matchup? I, I think a little bit yes, and, and uh, not only did Jack take forever to make his decision <laughs> on each move, maybe even we have to discuss potential penalties for teams who, who take Ooh. the entire time uh, to make moves. So that's a, a potential as well. But I think a big thing is getting those clean switches. There were multiple times in this battle where his Pokemon got down to red health and then he went to switch into something else, which yeah. I, I can, can understand for maybe a Pokemon like, but here's the thing, Zekrom, these are professionally built and, and these are built Pokemon. Zekrom's probably not gonna one shot many, many things unless he correctly predicts a switch. Yeah. So when it's down at red health, just, you know what, say, hey, you know what, Zekrom, you battled well, let's let's have Landon take out this Pokemon, and let's go into a clean switch instead yeah. of trying to switch and always getting that chip damage. Oh, damage, not, I, I don't even know what I said, sandwich, maybe, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm hungry right now. Um, but instead of trying to get chip damage, chip damage, chip damage, just say, you know what, let's go for a clean switch, Zekrom, buddy, sorry, you're out of this one, or or uh, uh, Bronzong, sorry, man, you, you, you tried your yeah. hardest. Let's go into a clean switch. So that would be my advice to Jack as well. Um, so I th do think it was a little bit of shooting himself in the foot. And then on the flip side, you know, Landon knew what was coming. He knew what was coming last week against uh, the Atlanta Braviar. He was told the team. He had uh, a good inkling of what was coming with Jack. I mean, Jack basically gave him at least a couple of members that he was bringing. So maybe maybe news to everybody who's playing the Iowa and Center is to not tell him who's <laughs> going to be on your team. I'm uh, not saying Landon hasn't been battling great. He's had a great strategy and yeah. everything like that. But it's always nice to know what Pokemon are coming into battle. Yeah. Yeah. And and like we said with the prediction last week, it was just going to be always going to be close for us. It's, it's, it was tough to predict 
um, because I was expecting a little bit more from the Ninetales. But you're right, those are a couple of big pieces of advice. I mean, to uh, take less time. And also, if your Pokemon's in red, like Zekrom, he saved it, saved it, saved it, and then it just died anyways. Like, there's, yeah. there was literally no point in it coming out because um, it bolt strike after uh, Landon switching the Quagsire, and then it died. Like, there was no point in it in it staying alive ultimately it was it was a free switch nonetheless like i get it it was it was probably going to counter halucho or polyrath i get that but at the same time it really wasn't gonna more than likely a couple of those pokemon were gonna outspeed it anyways or they were gonna take a hit like you said so yeah ultimately that did shoot him in the foot um bronzong gyro balling and incineroar was not the smartest play in the yeah. world <laughs> that was not but smartest. also you got to consider too in this battle that landon also critically took out the snorlax and yeah power mm -hmm. still would have done a lot of damage who who knows who who could say whether or not that would have actually taken out the snorlax yeah. if it didn't critically hit but still that was a huge moment as well because as we said last week and going on Jack's team kind of runs through Snorlax and Arcanine, who didn't make it out to this match, and Zekrom. Those are probably his three strongest Pokemon. Yeah. So if, if you take out Snorlax, much like in, in Fusa's game plan, once he took out that game plan, it was all over. So that critical hit from the uh, Scizor onto the Snorlax was absolutely huge. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, it did go to a timer, like we said. Uh, but I, the Iowa Center were able to run out with a 4-2 win. Um, and... Is that they, they went to timer last week, didn't they? I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Jack, Jack did, Jack and Jack Derek did. did, yes, correct. Yeah. And also, he's he's dynamaxing on his last move each time, so yeah, that 60 second timer hit, and then yeah. he was like, All right, let's dynamax, let me just take an additional 35 seconds for this uh cutscene of, of me dynamaxing my Pokemon here. Yeah, okay. you can't complain about the timer when you're the one taking all the time. Okay. Right. <laughs> I know I took a lot of time last week, but we're not going to talk about that, okay? Hey, if it's a good <laughs> battle and you guys are going back and forth, you know, absolutely. Like, yeah. you and Foos, you guys were just switching. You guys were just trying to get your game plan. So, Until in end. that case, but it's like, when you're taking your full time to decide a move each and every time, yeah. you're almost, you're hurting yourself there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, GG's to both of you guys. GG's to Landon, uh, currently mm -hmm. top of the, the Mega Division. Um, you have the tiebreaker over Derek right now, but they're still they're exactly the same in terms of stats. But uh, Landon has the tiebreaker, so this is gonna be a nice, nice uh, run in with these final three weeks. So GG's to both of you guys, um, and yeah, great job. Moving on to the next matchup, we have the uh, Ellie Inferno versus the Redwood Meowth. Um, this one stung a little bit, not gonna lie. There was uh, some luck involved. Uh, I don't know how much of a difference it would have made but there was some luck involved. Um, it was a bit of a, I was never super confident against this team because uh, I knew some of my Pokemon could beat some of his, but ultimately his wall range tends to crawl with Serena. Like they, there's just a lot of Pokemon that can counter me. Um, Serena didn't miss a freaking high jump kick, which sucked. Uh, that would have been awesome. Uh, but I think a couple of big plays was a uh, Hippowdon getting confused and then hitting itself when I was gonna Thunderfang the Cramorant. Uh, and then Rotom Heat missing an overheat on uh, Amoongus. Both of those sucked because that cost me some damage. Um, but I at least got a great play out of it because uh, Buzzwool, I was very scared for a second that I was about to get swept. I even said in the video, I'm about to get swept because uh, the Buzzwool used Fell Stinger on Dracovish, uh, Dr Dr Dracovish, and it got off. Uh, uh, well, Fell Stinger gives you plus three if you kill someone with it because it's like base like 20 power or something like that's something ridiculously low but if you kill with it it gives you plus three and he got the beast boost so he was plus four when he used the max knuckle on my gigantamax corviknight but corviknight survived on like 20 hp turned around and killed the buzzwool um so i was incredibly happy with that i at that point i don't think i really could have came back but i was very happy that corviknight managed to pull that off uh that was huge but ultimately i mean i really just couldn't I couldn't get out of the funk of the, the couple of things that just didn't go my way. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's gonna sound maybe biased. I don't know, but I don't think I played horribly. It's just uh, there's a couple of things that didn't go my way. Um, and full credit to Ace man. He he brought it. He knew what he was doing. Um, I was not expecting Fell Stinger. That could have gone way worse. But that Amoongus, man, I really wish it got MVP. Uh, but unfortunately, it did not because Primarina didn't die. So that's why. Or no, sorry, not Primarina. Um, what you call it? Well, yeah. Wait. No, Dynamax, sorry. Celesteela didn't die. This is Dynamax Division. Um, 
So I really wish Amoongus would have got it, but unfortunately, Solo Steel had to do better. Uh, but if that Amoongus did tear me apart towards the end, but there's really not much I really could have done against it aside from hitting that overheat. That was like the only gambit I had left to try and get rid of it. Uh, but GG's man, that, that Amoongus is built different. <laughs> it really is. Uh, that was a, an incredible matchup. Ended up, uh, the Redwood Mouse ended up winning 6-3. Um, so GG's to them. That was, uh, they, uh, AC did really, really well. Um, what were your thoughts on this matchup, Timmy? Yeah, although the Amoongus did not win the MVP, it wins the Timmy B name of the Ooh. week named Goomba. Uh, so that Ooh. is the name of the week. So shout out to that Amoongus for, for winning name of the <laughs> week. Uh, congratulations. But And we said this uh, in the preseason, in the post-draft uh, uh, episode, is that your team is very weak to water and ice. And even if you just looked at the teams that were battling in this one, if you said which team is winning, Team A or Team B, I'd go with Team B because I think three or four members were weak to either water or ice on your team. And five members on his team were typings that were super effective against rock or ground against those Pokemon. So just looking at that plain and simple, I, I was going to go with the, the Meowth anyway to pull out the win. And it showed. I mean, Amoongus was dominating. Uh, they, they had the water and ice types. So it, 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 it wasn't a good matchup for you. I don't think you also did horribly wrong. My advice to you and even to Jack as well is that it seemed like you guys kept <laughs> hesitating and kind of second guessing yourself and trying to overthink the prediction a little bit. And I was even talking to Landon about this. And again, me just being the aggressive Pokemon that I am. It's, instead of being like, oh, is he going to do this or is he going to do this or do that or, you know, whatever. I'm just going to be like, I'm going to attack you because I know I can take a hit, whatever you're bringing to the table. And I know I'm going to do do some damage to you. So that would just be my advice to yourself and, and, and even to Jack as well. It seemed like you were trying to out predict their out prediction of your next move. You're like, well, if I do this, he's going to do that, then I should do this. So that would just be my advice to you is to not overthink it and to not really second guess yourself. Go in with a game plan and, and go in and attack that. And, and yeah, I don't think you battled well. I mean, you did as much as you could in this matchup, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't, wasn't your day, wasn't your battle. And I think you guys can bounce back. <laughs> Thanks for saying it. I don't think you battled well. Um, <laughs> um, that yeah that uh, to a certain degree i agree but at the same time um i still think i could have won that match potentially i don't sure, i don't think sure. i don't think it, it was cut and dry as it might seem in terms of tight matchups um because i had a lot of stuff to counter his stuff as well so there was it wasn't as super cut and dry as it was just looking at the typing so um but uh to a certain degree yeah, i agreed too as well with the prediction stuff um, I think the only real example of that in this match was using Thunder Wave on Cramorant instead of just attacking, but that was that was about it for me. Um, but GG Ace, like I said, you played an incredible match. I mean, you, you might have the advantage, but that doesn't necessarily mean you always win. Um, again, a couple things go differently. My way, maybe the matchup turns different, uh, turns on its head. Maybe I get a couple more kills, but uh, ultimately Ace, you know, took advantage. He made the right moves and did well i didn't appreciate that spore on my tyranitar at the end <laughs> but you know it's okay whatever <laughs> i just like the little animation for spore where it's like yeah. like, <laughs> uh, but hey, regardless gg's ace uh, that was an incredible matchup um and so far redwood mouse two and oh two and oh very impressive start um moving on to the who we have the detroit luxuries versus the philadelphia flygons this was a this was a pretty one-sided matchup if i've ever seen one um i think maybe the second biggest victory in the ebl uh 6-1 for the philadelphia flygons um an impressive impressive showing from lone wolf man he he just dom dominated that match did really well um like i said earlier celestilo walked away with the dynamax mvp finished off the last couple pokemon um, to go 2-0 with its kill, uh, kill death. Uh, Rhyperior was the only Pokemon to go down, but not after doing quite a bit of work, taking down Roserade and Stack Attacka, taking down the literal wall, which was huge. So Rhyperior may have been the only Pokemon that died, but it definitely did a, a lot in that matchup. Darmanitan taking out Blaziken at the beginning was huge. We have yet to really see anything from Blaziken because it keeps dying right away. So that's huge. Um, Xerneas didn't even have to come onto the field. Magazone only came on to really try and counter the Toxapex, but ultimately it wasn't really necessary. Um, Celesteela was the one that took down the Toxapex. Uh, who else did it take? I believe it took out Lucario as well, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. 
uh, Celestia just cleaned up shop. Drapion did well against Aegislash. I mean, it was just an all around. I, and, and you know, the first thing Wolf said in the matchup was like, I, I prepped like crazy for this match and it showed it showed because he just he was ready for everything that that um, that Max was bringing. Honestly, the, he said the only thing he wasn't expecting was Lucario. And uh, even then it, it showed that he prepped. He really prepped for this match. So good job, Wolf. Uh, keep prepping like that for every single match because you showed a lot in this battle. You showed that you are definitely up there in the contender. You can't call yourself a bad battler anymore. Uh-uh, not with a <laughs> performance like that. So the expectations are going to be rising if you keep performing like that throughout the season. So great job, Wolf. Fantastic performance. Um, Max, we still know you're a good battler. Maybe you just weren't as prepared for this, uh, for this matchup um as 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 um wolf was i think honestly just looking at them wolf probably had the better team um to deal with max's side so i i would have much like you said with the last matchup i would have probably if, if you had shown me these six or six i probably would have picked the philadelphia flyguns um so sorry for doubting you wolf but you played incredible so i will not doubt you again <laughs> unless you're playing who are you playing next week you're playing you're playing the Entei, so maybe I'll doubt you a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, incredible job this week. Um, great, great job. What were your thoughts on this on this matchup, Timmy? Yeah, I was watching it on uh, Max's side on his channel. And the way he does it is he won't put the Pokemon on the layout until they enter battle. And you know it's bad news when when your opposing team only has five of those six slots <laughs> uh, with a, with the Pokemon fill it out. But this was just a dominating performance by. The Philadelphia Flygons and, and I Lone Wolf. I yeah. mean, this, I mean, just pr predicted everything. And unfortunately, the Detroit Lux Rays couldn't do it. Uh, could it be a preparation thing? Obviously, I Lone Wolf was well prepared. I'm not saying the Detroit Lux Rays weren't prepared, but uh, it seems like somebody did a little extra homework, mm -hmm. got the extra credit, and uh, in turn, they got the A plus and mm -hmm. they got the victory. So that was just a dominating performance. And again, it was just one of those situations for Max where it's like, what are you gonna do, man? You know, he was just outpowered, outmove, out strategized. So at the end of the day, it's like you're not gonna win many battles. I mean, even the best, best of the best in this league, you're not gonna win many battles when it's just not your day. You're outmatched, and, and your opponent is just a little bit more prepared. Uh, so unfortunately, not. I still like the Detroit Lux Race. I still think they have a good team. For some reason, they just still need to put the pieces together. They got the puzzle. They can see the puzzle picture. Now you just gotta connect the pieces to make it happen the philadelphia flyouts it's gonna be a very interesting battle we'll make our prediction later but the everglade entes that's gonna be fun to watch for sure mm -hmm. definitely gotta have to prepare it just as much if not more than than the uh flyouts did this week yeah, for them. so uh that was a uh, a quick battle and uh, we're about to talk about another quick battle yeah this next battle we may as well segue into it thank you for the segue uh we have Ooh, the miami <laughs> we have the miami dragonites versus the atlanta bravery is a rematch from the finals of last season mm -hmm. and honestly I, this this was a much better battle than the finals i will say um <laughs> much better battle but at the same time it kind of felt like for a second there guanaco did get pushed back because at one point it was 3-2 to the atlanta bravery um but man he turned it around and came up with some huge kills Excadrill did well in this matchup um it did go <laughs> it got burned again sorry sorry huge burn. yeah huge, huge burn, burn. Yeah. sorry uh sorry matt that was uh another big burn and another big battle um and eventually it, it went down probably sooner than it might have if it didn't get the burn because it probably would have killed Zashin to be to be perfectly honest it probably would have killed it sooner than it got oh, the kill. E I think e easily yeah right? yeah so I uh, yeah excadrill getting burned was a massive 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 blow to the atlanta bravery um, but beyond that, just Miami just turned it around. I mean, they, they did well to make the right plays down the stretch after that burn. Because um, obviously you can get that burn and still not win the match. So you get that burn, you take down Excadrill, you still have to, you know, get the rest of the kills. And that's exactly what Miami did. Uh, they neutralized a lot of what Atlanta was bringing in the second half. Um, and after it was 3-2, it, it ended 4-1, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, Miami went for four straight kills while Atlanta only got one in that stretch. So it was definitely a nice turnaround. Um, I will say, this is, I think, the first time I've ever seen uh, Guaneco get get uh, frustrated at something when um, Kartana survived the snipe shot from Inteleon. And that was like the only time I've ever seen him get kind of mad. So I thought that was kind of funny, but um, Kartana did do a little bit, but it just couldn't do enough. 
um, to try and turn the match around. I believe Quartana in that stretch was the only one that got that kill while uh, Miami racked up the other four to finish it off. So 6-4 win for Miami. They're continuing to prove their, their championship credentials yet again. Uh, look, looking like very much, very much looking like the reigning champs right now. Um, and they are performing really well, despite, like I said, despite being, you know, pushed against the wall. I feel like that's what really shows what a battler is capable of when you're pushed against the wall. How can you turn it around and uh, turn it around? They did. So uh, what did what did you think about this match at Timmy? Yeah, I, I think it was really cool. I think that was one of the first times I saw the uh, snipe shot move because when I played, I chose uh, Grookey, so I didn't see much of Intel on. So maybe my next playthrough of Sword and Shield, I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> go Sobble, Sobble Squad uh, just so I can use that move because that was pretty awesome mm. to see. I was like, whoa, that's cool. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a good battle. It was a quick battle too, which I like. Mm -hmm. Both guys knew exactly what they were doing. That burn on the extra drill was absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we said, it would have taken that position. And uh, I think, although uh, the Braviary went up uh, rather quickly at the in the first half of the battle, I was never a doubt for me with the Miami Drag Knight seeing his last three. If you saw like the last three versus the last three on each team, uh, Guanaco still had the Formosa, still had the Weavile, uh, and then on Matty Ice's team, we saw the uh, Latios and uh, I forget the other Pokemon, but just looking at like once everybody got a couple of knockouts in and seeing the remaining team members, again, I was kind of like, all right, Guanaco still has this, or at least he has the advantage mm -hmm. uh, with, with some of the types and the moves and, and everything like that. So it was a good battle. Definitely could see a rematch happening in, mm -hmm. in the playoffs for sure. So it was a good win by the Miami Dragon Knights. As we said, the Atlanta Braviary is now 0-2, but probably the best 0-2 team. They're probably the best team without a win. I mean, going up against the Iowa and Cinderor and the Miami Dragon Knights, not too many people are going to come out, you know, one and one or two and zero. Oh. They're probably going to lose a couple of these battles. Yeah. So the Braviary are still going to bounce back for sure. I mean, they were one and two last year, still made it the championship game. But uh, the Miami Dragon Knights proving that they are still the team to beat in mm -hmm. the EBL. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you made up a, a proud of a little bit. I can speak. You brought up a good point in that uh, the, the both sides were just quick with their with their decisions, um, and that intent wing wink Jack. Yeah, <laughs> very. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that was one thing I noticed definitely. Uh, with they were just like like just quick 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 boom boom boom. Um, by the way, Fermosa did have two kills, no deaths, but because uh, because the Philadelphia Flygons um, had more Pokemon left over, the um, Celesteela was the one that walked away with the MVP. But those are all the matches from week two. The current rankings, uh, we'll start with the Mega Division. It is currently uh, the Iowan Cinewar and the Kentucky Kinglers joint first. Uh, the Everglade Entes in what would be third at one and one. Uh, well, I went Cinewar and the Kentucky Kinglers are both two and zero with a plus three differential. Everglade Entes third with one. Uh, they are one and one with a plus one differential. The Brunswick Nine Tails zero and two minus three. Uh, and the only inferno always oh and two what is it uh the the dynamic is that a, is that a, wait, wait, is that oh, a, what, what, is that a minus six i i don't minus know i didn't six? i didn't hear that i don't know about that Bro, um you're gonna have to i can't you're read gonna have to sweep you're I, gonna I, have to sweep the new bronze with nine <laughs> i don't know i can't read well so it <laughs> might be plus six i can't really tell but the dynamax division rankings we have the miami dragonites and the redwood meows both at two and oh with a plus five differential at joint first so we have two divisions that are joint first right now um, that have joint first uh, teams right now. Uh, in third, we have the Philadelphia Flygons who completely turned their diff differential around. Mm -hmm. They're currently one and one with a plus three differential. The Atlanta Braviary, 0 and two with a minus three differential. And the Detroit Luxuries, 0 and two with a minus eight differential. Um, Seriously, looks like we're going to be getting some uh, pineapple pizza oh, delivered to the Detroit Luxuries. Oh, snap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, teams, that's, that's definitely why this next week is going to be interesting, just looking at the rankings. So, to start off for week three, we have the LA Inferno versus the New Brunswick Ninetales. Uh, two teams that haven't won, which we'll see again in a bit. Um, two teams that have yet to win a match. Um, Jack. First week played decently well um, against Derek. Again, if that timer doesn't happen, um, Jack might have actually won that match. Probably more than likely would have won that match. Um, so, but then week two, a little bit of a weaker performance. Not as good. Um, again, it goes to timer, but I really don't think that would have mattered anyways. I think Landon still would have walked away with a nice hefty win. 
Um, and then you have the Alien Inferno, who got cheated out of a victory last week. And uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, no, uh, I don't I don't think I've played horribly, but I just definitely think I have some things I need to work on. Uh, might be bringing some new sets this week. Just a little hit hit to to Jack there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, this is definitely gonna be an intense matchup. Both teams definitely need a win. Uh, I feel like LA, and this is non-biased, I would say this regardless, LA probably needs a win more so than the New Brunswick Ninetales because of how deep, deeper of a hole they are in compared to the Ninetales, but still a win would be huge for either of these teams regardless of how big it is, even if it's a 6-5 and it barely does anything for the differential, one of these teams needs a win. Um, made same with the, the matchup we'll get to in a bit, but uh, I, I mean, I'm, as per usual, I'm gonna back myself. I love you, Jack. Um, I'm gonna try my best to do something in this matchup i feel like i definitely have a pretty favorable team to try and do some good damage against Jax. um his is going to be definitely bulky and i think that's going to be a little bit of a problem but um i definitely think i got a good team to try and take a stuff down he does have some counters to my team um but i also have some counters for his counters so it's going to be a nice like looping battle here in terms of who can counter everyone's counters like it's just going to be that kind of battle um I, of course, I have to back myself, man. I have to have confidence with an 0-2 record. I have to have some kind of confidence still. Um, but <laughs> what do you think about this matchup, Timmy? Yeah, I mean, both teams need a win, and we'll talk about that with another matchup, uh, a battle of a couple of 0-2 teams happening in Week 3. Mm -hmm. So uh, both teams need a win tremendously. Uh, I'm just going to go opposite of you just to make this a little bit spicier here on the uh, the weekly roundup and I guess the preview for week three. I'm going to go with the New Brunswick Ninetales to win this one. Um, I, my advice to you, my friend, would be prepare to go to timer because I oh, don't know God. if Jack's strategy is going to change too much. So just prepare to go to timer. You, you probably have some extra time to think about your moves this week. So uh, I'm going to go with the New Brunswick Ninetales to win this one. I, I just want to spice things up and you know what? You're minus six, buddy, so, I mean, it's hard to pick a team that's minus six. And sorry, let me just let me just take that in for a second. That My, my co-host doesn't love me, but... I love I'm just you, kidding, buddy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, you could have gone opposite of on me on one of the other matchups, just saying, but... Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure we will, but, I mean, it, 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 it's just something, you know, with Ninetales, you know, they, they got a team. Yeah. They got a good team. Everybody has a team. <laughs> um so yeah we're i'm going to la timmy's going with new brunswick uh so yeah gonna be a fun match up there moving on to the one of the probably i'd say the highlight match uh actually no wow hold on there's two highlight matches this week there's two matches that you guys definitely need to keep an eye out for there's a lot going on this week oh my god uh the iowa center versus the kentucky kinglers who we mentioned are joint first in the mega division uh that's an incredible matchup um i would say maybe right now i'd say landon has the edge I would say Landon has the edge um, because I feel like his performances have been a little bit more one side, not necessarily one sided, but a little bit more dominant than Derek's. Um, Derek had a great showing though against Foos, which is not an easy, that's not an easy battle. No, so yeah, absolutely not. not, which we'll, we'll touch on Foos' next battle right now. But um, yeah, I, that's, that's it. Wow. That's an incredibly tough matchup to call actually. Um, I'm going to lean with Landon. I feel like Landon's strategies have been a little bit unpredictable. He's been a little bit all over um, and he's making the right switches. He's making the right calls, the right predictions. Um, not to say that Derek hasn't been uh, because Derek has been as well, but Derek had one performance where he honestly probably should have lost. Let's be honest, if it wasn't for the timer. And he had another performance against a great battler where he kind of let him back into the match. He, he kind of lost control in the second half, whereas Landon has kept control. I would say kept control for both of his matches so far. Um, despite the matchup against the Atlanta Bravery being pretty close, he, he kept it. Um, he kept ahead and it showed towards the end when he kept the Lone Raichu alive. So um, I'm going to lean towards Landon with this one. Uh, this is an, an incredibly tense matchup, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean towards Landon with this one. What do you think? I, again, I'm going to go opposite of we, okay. with you. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm going to go opposite of you. Let me speak a little bit slower now. I'm going to go with the Kentucky Kinglers in this one. I just think they have the better team. I mean, looking at their team, we even said that this was going to be one of the best teams and probably the best team in this division in our preseason ranking. So I'm going to stick with that. Okay. And as we mentioned earlier in this episode, just the growth that Derek has shown and his dedication to being truly the best team in this league. Uh, he's not there yet. Well, he has to win the championship, of course, for us to, to you know, put that crown yeah. on him. Uh, but 
I like this a little bit better, and uh, hopefully he listens to our advice and does not tell Landon what team is coming. <laughs> I think that has given Landon a slight advantage, and again, not saying that he hasn't been battling well but making the right moves, but it's nice that, you know, he knows what's coming his way. So if Derek doesn't tell him what team and it's a little bit of a surprise, maybe Landon fumbles a little bit, but I'm going to go with the Kentucky – it's going to be a close one. This one yes. might go down to the timer, and it might be a close – uh, you know, four to three, five to four type of battle right there. So I'm going with the Kinglers in a very close one. Uh, but by no means is this uh, um, a hit or a whack at Landon. Yeah, I just don't want to doubt Landon anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. I know Derek has a very tough team, uh, and this is going to be a very tough matchup for Landon, but I'm going to back him. Um, and I can't blame you for picking the Kinglers either. Um, so that's... It's a really tough matchup, but uh, I'm very excited to watch that one. Uh, next up, we have the Evergreen Entes versus the Philadelphia Flygons. We have Foos, who played incredibly week one. Uh, week two did well enough to to strangle, to, to wrestle control a bit away from Derek in that mm -hmm. in that match. Um, but he's going against kind of a hot Philadelphia Flygons. They have to be feeling good coming off that six one victory. And like you said, oh, yeah, if you, like you said, if the Philadelphia Flygons can do their homework again, like they did against the Detroit Luxuries. Oh, Foos needs to watch out. I know Foos does his homework, but clearly the Flygons and Lone Wolf, he clearly does his homework. He knows what to do. So if he can properly uh, prepare for the Entes, I think he could do really well. Um, like we've mentioned before, the Philadelphia Flygons have a very balanced team, and I feel like it's going to be a little bit tough to try and predict for the Entes. Um, I, I'm going to back, I mean, no, I'm going to back Wolf. I'm going to back Wolf in this one. I think maybe he, he feels, he has to be feeling really good, like we just said. And I feel like that confidence is going to carry. If, if not, if he doesn't win this, it's going to be close. I feel like he's, he's going to do his homework to at least try and keep it close. Um, but I'm going to back the Flygons. I'm going to back the Dynamax division in this one, I guess. <laughs> what do you think? You know what? Stop me if you heard this before, but I'm going opposite. <gasps> I'm going with the Everglade Entes to win this one. Uh, I, I like Foose's strategy. Uh, I think Island Wolf is going to come prepared as well. Um, I like the team a little bit more on the Ante side. I think Billy Mays might make his return yep. to the uh, the battlefield. Uh, we'll see the Galatas, but we haven't really seen too much of that Galate. So yep. I'm very excited to kind of see uh, what team Foose is going to be bringing as well. Straight Again, like the last one we just mentioned, I think this is going to be a close one. I think this is just going to be a plus one uh, or, or yeah, plus one minus one for the winner and the loser. So uh, this is going to be exciting to watch, but I'm going to go with the Entes on this one. All right. And yeah, that's that. I mean, it's crazy to say that that's like the least hype matchup because it's still incredibly hype because <laughs> we yeah. have two team we have two matches where we have like teams that haven't gotten wins we have two matches between the first place teams and that match is kind of just in the middle but it's still really hype like this is just gonna be a crazy week three um but yeah uh so i'm taking everglade i mean sorry i'm taking philadelphia and timmy is taking everglade moving on to the fourth and penultimate matchup of week three we have the detroit lectures versus the atlanta bravery this is the other matchup where we have two teams that have yet to win a match uh, the luxury is in a the deepest hole in the league. I can I can say that I'm not in the deepest hole in the league yet. Um, <laughs> uh, it's close. It's close. It's close, but I'm not. <laughs> um, but it's not not to say like that that week two matchup, man. It's just it's kind of hard to say whether it was just like Max is having a tough time with his team or if it was just a tough battle. Like I, I don't know what the real answer is right now. Um, whereas Matt has been. He he did he did get controlled quite a bit by Miami, especially in that second half. And even Landon did a lot of controlling in his match too, a lot of uh, controlling that match. So I, I I'm gonna back Atlanta. Um, I'm gonna be surprised if you back Detroit if you didn't back me. Just saying. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna back Atlanta in this one. Um, I feel like Matt's understanding his team a lot better than Max's, or maybe just Max. I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, we don't know what's going on. You know, maybe it's behind the scenes prep thing or it's just bad matchups uh, in the teams he's going against. Um, it's hard to say what exactly it is, but uh, I'm gonna back at line in this one. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Luxuries came up with a surprise win. That's kind of what they did last season. They came up with a shock win and then proceeded to do really well in their next matchup as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Luxuries could pull out something crazy um, and a win that we're not really expecting, but uh, I'm gonna back the Atlanta Bravery in this one. What, uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm with you on this one. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braviary, and I think the key is uh, to someone like Matty Ice, again, he's 0-2, but seeing that 0-2 and that minus 8, 
it can't get into his head. He still has to prepare as if this person was, you know, 2-0 and and plus 12. Yeah. You know, you got to still prepare that way at each and every time. So I'm just going to go with the Braviary. I think what I've seen from them so far this season, even a little bit of last season, is that they are still a contender. I mean, they mm-hmm. went to the finals last year. So I do expect them to pull out the victory. And this could be it for the Lux Rays. I mean... If, if they get to below minus 10 and then somebody else is the next best is not even close, we might as well just order that pineapple pizza right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braviary uh, to win this one over the Detroit Lux Race. Yep, so we're both backing Atlanta, so big expectations, man. But like you said as well, you can't take that record for granted. You still have to prepare definitely uh, very well for this matchup um, because Max's team is still nothing to, nothing to scoff at. It's still, it's still a good team. It's still a really good team. So... You still got to prepare. You still got to get ready. But uh, Atlanta definitely has the advantage going to this one. Uh, and now the final matchup for week three. Um, the other matchup between both first place teams. We have the Miami Dragonites versus the Redwood Males. Who would have thought? Um, and, and honestly, I'm kind of doubting my decision to immediately take the Miami Dragonites in this one. Um, I feel like that's the easy answer because, the, like we said before, the rating champ is still doing really well. But the Redwood Males, you can't discredit them. They're They're... The main goal, we all know the main goal for Forsaken Ace is to beat the Miami Dragonites. So I have a feeling he's going to come out with something really especially annoying this week to try to frustrate uh, Gwen Echo. He's going to come out with something very strong, very different. Um, and he's going to come out with just a, an insane strategy. I don't know how Miami will adjust. I feel like that's the big question in this one. It's not really how Miami is going to dominate. It's how Miami adjusts to the redwood meows i think that's going to be the big key for them um i don't think they're gonna i don't i don't think their game plan is going to go smooth no matter what i feel like redwood's not going to do a lot to try and disrupt that um but with that being said if anyone was going to figure out ways to bounce around the redwood meows it'd probably be gone echo so i i'm tempted to go to redwood meows but i kind of have to back the miami dragonites um, they just have looked really, really, really good in their two matchups. Um, the, not to say that the Redwood Meows haven't either. There's a reason why they're both sitting at the same differential and both in first place. Um, but I think I'm going to give the edge to the Dragonites. I just feel like Winneko will be able to adjust well. And I think that's the key. It's adjusting well to whatever the Redwood Meows bring. So what are you thinking with this matchup? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Miami Dragonites as well. I mean, they're still number one in my heart uh, and <laughs> apparently also number one in the battlefield as well. So I'm going to go with the Dragonites until I can see them lose or see uh, a lot of vulnerability. Uh, I'm still going to pick them to win. Not to discredit the Meows at all. I just don't think anybody can get in the Guanaco's head right now. We saw the Meows last week against the Flygons. That me- that Cantonian Meow. Yes, that Cantonian Meow. Uh, really got in the head with Substitute, Protect, this, that. Really got in the head of the Flygons. That's not going to happen with the Miami Dragonites. Guanaco knows exactly what to do and how to handle this situation. So, uh, And again, I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to see the Meows kind of pull it mm-hmm. out. But right now, I just can't make that pick. Yeah, so we have some big monumental matchups. Uh, I will say we saw a little bit of vulnerability. We talked about it a little bit earlier with the when I could, he got a little bit frustrated in his match. So who knows? Maybe maybe he loses his cool against Red Mouse. I don't see that happening, but um, it is a possibility. Uh, but yeah, we have some monumental matchups this week. This week three is shaping up to be the best week so far. I mean, at least the most oh, yeah. eventful week because we have we're gonna have two teams take sole possession of first place. Uh, we're gonna have two teams take sole possession of last place um <laughs> so it's gonna be a very tough week um for everyone involved and good luck to everyone of course but uh, that's gonna be it for the roundup this week um of course like i said at the beginning check out everyone's links in the descriptions down below every saturdays when the matches go up uh so that's you're gonna be finding all the matches on those channels of course so be sure to check be sure be sure to check to be sure to check them all out and subscribe and do all that good stuff and check out their socials from all their videos uh i have been lonely hermit your host uh, my links of course are down below and i am always joined by my co-host it's really timmy b his links of course are down below uh you have any last words for the people my, my dude uh i am hungry so i'm gonna go eat some food same <laughs> uh <laughs> so we're gonna call it there we'll see you guys next week with the week three roundup and i uh, hope you all have a fantastic day we'll see you next week bye bye bye